Well, I've finished up one project and moved on to another. First off, the CO2 file system. I got interested in sensors for my house and poking around on the Raspberry Pi Sense Hat that I bought some time ago. It had temperature, air pressure, and humidity sensors. I wanted to know if I could measure other aspects of air quality and found this neat little CO2 sensor on Adafruit. So I did some simple programs to read and write the sensor's I2C interface, and once I got done, I decided to do it up Plan 9 style and have it integrated as a file system in the namespace. I borrowed from the GPS file system code because it had just the bare minimum to make one level directory with read-only files. I just needed to open and read the files, but I also needed this end statement here. Um, so that way it could respond properly when it was unmounted uh, so that the chips could be sent their shutdown commands and the I2C interface could be cleanly disconnected or else if not it will lock up. And we can see here on the Pi that it's the SCD40 chip and I already have it running so it's in serve so all you have to do is mount it and here are the files it puts out so the all file will sort of print everything out in a nice kind of readable format. I have found that the humidity sensor can give me some weird um, sort of inconsistent readings. I'm not sure why, but the other ones are pretty spot on. And uh, other than that, the other files will just spit out just a plain number in case I want to write a program to just grab the numbers and store them somewhere. I figure I could probably fix the humidity thing by pulling the numbers out, storing them, and then averaging. But anyway, um, that's basically done for now. And I'll have a link below to where I have the code for that. Well, having finished the CO2 file system, I got a tip from a viewer on how to control these Philips Wiz light bulbs without using a phone app and a connection to the outside world and without the instructions I'd already found that involved breaking them open and reflashing them. Fortunately, doing networking stuff on 9Front is really easy. Uh, unfortunately, these bulbs expect a string of JSON formatted data, and I don't have much experience with JSON. And, but there's a library for it in 9Front, but I'm not familiar with that either. Um, in the short term, this isn't a big deal. I found some examples online, and sending simple instructions one at a time is actually pretty easy. So this is a simple program that lets me turn the light on or off. It's set up to take the IP address of the bulb and a 1 or a 0 for on and off. Uh, I have an int to store the file descriptor for the network connection and the value of the on off. A buffer to hold the reply from the bulb. Uh, you can't ignore the reply, but I've been grabbing them for debugging purposes. Uh, this turns the second argument into an integer. Um, and it's just a check to make sure that I don't uh, put in the wrong value now that I've kind of probed them all to figure out what it can and can't take. Um, here's the network connection. So dial takes a connection string and some other stuff. Uh, if you see my video on the listen command, it's in that same format. Uh, but what I'm feeding it is the output from the make or net make address function. And uh, this lets me feed in the IP address, entered as the first argument at the command line. Um, that's another quirk about these bulbs is that they speak UDP. So you just fire off one little UDP packet at them. And here's the print command. We print into the file descriptor returned from dial for the network connection. And this is a little JSON sort of formatted text string. I had to put all these little slashes in here for all the quotes. And then for state, I just have a thing where 
I just put in the whatever is in the state variable. And then a lot of documentation I saw said that it takes about a millisecond for the thing to respond, so I have a sleep. And then it reads back from the network file descriptor, whatever the response is, and then prints that to the screen. And it closes up and exits. Here's a little demonstration. And use with state to turn the bulb off. And back on. And I can use dim to turn it all the way down. So it won't take zero. For some reason, 10 is the lowest value it takes. You can kind of see the camera adjust to the brightness, but you saw it go down. And 100 is the highest, so I'll turn on full blast. And this bulb also has the RGB option. put in RGB values so I can make it all red or all green and all the bulbs have a, a color temperature changing option so that's under temp Set it all the way down to the warmest. Oops. Typed in my variable wrong there. There we go. And all the way up to the coolest. And these bulbs also have some like built-in little things that can run and they're called scene ID is what it is in the uh, in the formatting. So I can I know number four is party mode. And these things have an option for speed. Two hundred was the highest speed it would run. Yeah. That makes it change colors faster. And then on top of it, I made a little color picking tool. Well, I didn't make it completely. I actually found the code online looking for code demonstrations a while back. So I'll have a link down to his uh, stuff below. He's got some pretty fun little tools he does. And this does things by hue, saturation, and brightness. And then converts it to RGB values. So that's what his code did. And then I just add an option a little menu option now where it runs a little function that sends that off to whatever bulbs IP address you run with the command. So I can set it super blue, super saturated, really bright. Oops. Now if I say two bulb I can bring the saturation down Make it more pink. Make it really pink. Maybe closer to orange. But yeah, this has been uh, working out pretty well. I actually went and bought a second bulb so I can start writing some code up to actually search my house for these bulbs and 
someday I hope to make a little file system for them too, so I'll have a one-stop place where I can send commands to the bulbs. Um, so maybe I can have them do other things too, like uh, you know, have them fade to red in the evening, or maybe blink or something if the CO2 levels get too high, but I guess we'll see. And uh, in the meantime, uh, have fun.